Lesson 3.11, Word Problem Solving, Add and Subtract Money. We can use the strategy, make a table to help us organize and keep track of the amount of money we have in the bank, our bank account balance. We can use a table or ledger to record our deposits, withdrawals, and our current balance. A checkbook is a small book that contains checks that can be filled out to make payments. So here's a check made out to a pet store for $83.48. It also contains a table, or it's also called a ledger, to keep track of money deposited or checks that were written. When we write a check, we decrease the amount of money we have in our bank account. When we make a deposit into our account, we increase the amount of money we have in our bank account. We use addition and subtraction of decimals to track our bank balance. In the beginning of February, Sophia had a bank account balance of $478.39. Since then, she has written a check for $83.48 and $62.75. Then she made a deposit of $325 and wrote another check for $132.89. Sophia says she now has $524.27 in her bank account. We can make a table to see if Sophia is correct. We use the starting account balance and subtract each amount of the two checks. We add the amount of the deposit and we subtract the amount of the last check. She had a starting balance of $478.39. She wrote a check for $83.48. We subtract using regrouping and we get $394.91. We subtract her next check, we have to use regrouping here, and we get $332.16. Then we add her deposit and we get $657.16. Then we subtract the last check she wrote and we get $524.27. So Sophia said that's how much she had and she's correct. We can use rounding and estimation to see if this amount is reasonable. The starting balance was $478.39. We can round to the nearest dollar. That would be $478. We would round the $83.48 to the nearest dollar. The 4 tells the 3 to stay the same, so we subtract $83. We get $395. The next check, the 7 is going to tell the 2 and the 1's place to go up to a 3, so we round it to $63. We subtract it and get $332. This is already rounded to the dollar this $325, we add it, and it's $657. When we round the last check to the nearest dollar, the 8 tells the 2 to go up, so we subtract $133, and look, it's $524 for our estimate, and the actual amount was $524.27. So yes, it's reasonable because our estimate is very close to the exact answer. Bob is buying a candy bar for himself and each of his four friends. Each candy bar costs $1.10. How much do five candy bars cost? Make a table to find the cost of five candy bars. So we're going to make a table and fill in the information. And we think Bob and four friends, that equals five people. It's Bob and four friends. That's why it's saying five candy bars. We add the amount per candy bar until we find the cost of five candy bars. If one is $1.10, can you use mental math to figure out what two would be? If you said $2.20, you're right. So what would the cost of three candy bars be? We can add these together. That would be $3.30. Now we need to add $1.10 to this one. 
if you said $4.40, you're right. So do you know how much it would be for five candy bars? The total cost would be $5.50. We increased each line by $1.10. Each candy bar costs $1.10. If Bob has $10, how many candy bars can he buy? And think, we know that five candy bars cost $5.50. We can continue adding $1.10 to our table for each additional candy bar to see how many he can buy without going over $10. He only has $10, so we can't go over $10. Six would be $6.60. We would add another $1.10 and have $7.70. We would add another $1.10. That would be $8.80. We can add another $1.10 and that would be $9.90. And we haven't gone over $10. If Bob has $10, he can buy nine candy bars. Tables are used to organize information into a format that is easy to see and understand. A format is a pattern, plan, or arrangement. We add and subtract decimals just as we would add or subtract whole numbers by regrouping when needed. But we must make sure our decimal points are lined up straight. So for money amounts, the dollars would be the whole numbers. The tenths would be the ten cents of a dollar, and the hundredths would be the pennies of a dollar. So four dimes, or 40 cents, would be four tenths of a dollar. How many ways can we use nickels and pennies to represent 15 cents? So think, we can make a table to show the different ways. We write the number of coins needed in different combinations. We make a column for nickels and for pennies and the total value. We can use three nickels, that would make 15 cents, and zero pennies. We can use two nickels and five pennies. We can use one nickel and 10 pennies. We could use zero nickels and 15 pennies. We see there are four ways to represent 15 cents with nickels and pennies. It helps us to see the information quickly and easier. The admission price to a county fair is $12.50 for adults, $7.50 for children 3 to 12 years old, and $8.50 for seniors 62 years old and older. How much will it cost for two adults, three children, and two seniors to get into the fair? So think. We need a total amount, so we should add. We add the two adults, $12.50 and $12.50, and we get a subtotal of $25. The subtotal is the small total before we continue on. We add three children, $7.50 each, and now our subtotal is $47.50. We add two seniors, for $8.50 each, and our total is $64.50 for the family to get into the county fair. How much change would be given if they paid with four $20 bills? So think, $20 four times is $80. We need to subtract to find the difference. We have $80 minus the $64.50. We have zero minus zero, that's zero. We have a zero minus five, we can't do that. So what we can do is cross off both of these place values and look at it as an 80 and turn it into a 79. We put a digit over each one, 79. Just look at the entire thing as an 80, we cross it off, and make it one less than 80, which is 79. We give that one to the tenths place. And 10 minus five is five, nine minus four is five, and seven minus six is one. They would get $15.50 change. 
It can be very difficult to keep your place values straight and your columns straight as you're working with decimals. So we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep the place values in their correct column. For our next lesson, 3.12, we're going to choose a strategy, either using place value or properties, to add or subtract decimals. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you have a really great day. Bye.